In this video, I will be providing you with a general idea how to assemble a garage roof, um, hip roof with engineered roof trusses. Now, this could be a long video. Uh, if it is, I'm going to break it up into two parts. I'm not going to rush through it like I normally do with some of my videos, try and put all the information in there. This will be more of a video that I, I would imagine people are going to watch if they want to build something like this. So the first thing that you're usually going to start with will be some type of a plan, some type of a blueprint from the trust company or the manufacturer of the trusses. And this could actually be a few pages long. Um, and I've even had them before where they show each individual truss and, uh, and, and they're numbered. And this is kind of what I did over here. Let's just say that this particular truss um, from your company has a specific number, A1. This one here, A2. Um, this one over here might be a G, G1. This one might be a G2. You know, they might need to be, each one of these might have a number or a lettering system. And like I said, you might have a individual page uh, or they'll give you a booklet that'll have all the information in there. I, I strongly suggest that you study the information, get a good idea on how everything is going to go together. And, uh, and that might even include laying out uh, some of the parts around the building, which I'll kind of give you an idea of that here in a little bit. But let's just kind of start with the basics. This one's going to be 24 inches on center. You can see it down here, two foot overhang and then 24 inches on center spacing and I didn't mark each one out. I'm telling you that's what it is. I mean, like I said, this is a basic um, plan. Uh, your plan is probably going to have a lot more information on it. Double girder trusses here we can see will be supporting the trusses that come in uh, perpendicular here. Two by four hips, full length, and a six foot setback on the for the girder truss. Now I strongly suggest that you measure the bottom cords and you're going to see more of that here in a little bit to make sure that uh, six foot here doesn't mean six foot two or a, a little bit less than six foot. I just can't tell you how many times I've looked at the truss plan and uh, laid it out accordingly and then had to move the girder truss uh, because it was uh, um, was the wrong measurement on it or, you know, the right measurement to them, wrong measurement to me. So like I said, more on that in a little bit. Now let's take a look at the building or the garage after it has been framed. And I just kind of spread the trusses out. Um, you know, they're usually going to come bundled together, might just drop, they drop it off of a truck or a crane, whatever it is. Um, you might have to hand unload the trusses depending upon how big the trusses are. Again, this is for a garage, 20 foot by 20 foot uh, in width and depth. And uh, you might need to spread your trusses out. That's what I did here. I just kind of spread them out. These trusses, these trusses are going to go on this side, this on this side. These are going to be in the middle. And then these, of course, are going to go in this area here. And of course, here's the bottom cords that you're going to need to measure. Let's go through the trusses here, the other side. Here's our hips right here. And these might just be all bundled together um, with bands around them, metal, little metal straps. Again, just kind of like this is going to go in this section. This is going to go in this section this over in this section kind of a thing, your hips. Now here's what I meant by measuring the bottom cords here on these filler trusses. Um, and here we can see it's five foot eleven and a quarter. If we would have set the truss at six foot like the plan shown, then um, these might not uh, sit on the wall right. So always measure these measure every component that needs to be assembled um, or is going to dictate the location of another 
component in the truss system. So this measurement here is going to really dictate where the girder truss is going to be located. And of course that measurement will simply transfer onto the top framing plates. So this particular roof is the trusses are 24 inches on center. So that means the center of the truss, which is an inch and a half wide, is going to be uh, that's going to be 24 inches. So uh, the layout will have to be laid out accordingly. That's why this isn't six foot. It's three quarters of an inch less than six foot to make the truss work out um, to that measurement. And of course, it will have to be on the other side also. You will come off of the corner for this particular plan. Five foot, 11 and a quarter. And remember, that's what the bottom cords measured. And then you will lay out accordingly. So our layout here is basically 24 inches on center. And uh, you'll, have, you'll see where the double girder trusses, um, how they work out. But it's basically 24 inches on center. So from over here to over here, it's going to be 23 and a quarter inches to our mark and then going this way. Now, if you have a forklift or a crane, you can set the trusses on top of the walls like this. Um, but again, this isn't necessary. You can lift one truss and set it in place, each one individually. So the first truss we are going to install will be one of the girder trusses. You can install either one. And of course, I didn't show you how to lay out the other wall here, but... Um, one foot eleven and a quarter from the edge to here and then the truss is going to sit this side and then it's going to be two foot the rest of them are going to be two foot measurements two foot spacing to create a two foot on center and then the same with your blocks now some of these trusses might require hangers um, they might require blocks um, and, but we're going to use blocks so again one foot eleven and a quarter from the edge of the wall to the mark and then we got to come in an inch and a half to nail our block um, so that our truss the bottom cord lines up or is located in the right spot there and again the wall laid out first measurement is going to be 23 and a quarter and then two foot two foot two foot two foot two foot all the way down. Now I forgot to mention the brace. You might need to install a brace to support a couple of these trusses to prevent them from moving. And one of the ways that can be done is just by simply nailing one or screwing a section of it into the wall framing and then into the trusses. Uh, something you're going to have to remove so don't get carried away on that. Another thing will be to make sure that you locate any braces out of the way of any of the trusses that will be used later. So it's kind of in the center of these two trusses here. And of course, we installed the next truss, have the blocks in here. Sometimes the blocks by themselves will be enough to support smaller trusses or shorter lengths. Um, uh, trusses 20 foot, uh, I would imagine these blocks could support that. But Again, on a smaller pitch, this is a 4 and 12. If it was a 8 and 12 pitch, you're going to need uh, some type of braces here. Blocks, and of course they're shaped blocks on this one, have an angle on the top of it. The next truss, and you're just going to kind of work your way down. Now I added another... Um, brace on the top here. This is real common. You can add as many of these as you want. And this just prevents the trusses from moving. And, uh, you know, you just measure over two foot, measure from that two foot to uh, make sure that they're all going to be in the right spot. And you can always level these, but, you know, I don't get too carried away with straightening these out yet. I wait until after I get a couple of the um, trusses going this way to uh, check because sometimes you can have these leaning over a little bit in either direction the right or left and uh, where they're not plumb 
and um, you'll pull them together when you attach the other trusses or the hips to them. And that might not make sense to you uh, yet, but maybe later on it will. So again, just a one by four here, two by four, put a nail, maybe a 16D or an eight for something like this, drive it in a little bit, and then uh, don't drive it in all the way so that you can pull it out if needed. Another truss and the blocks. And of course the girder truss. So here we have the tallest truss and then these are probably going to be the same trusses and the two girder trusses will probably be the same also for a situation like this. So this gives us a nice place to start and the trusses are stabilized. You can always put a one by four or another support brace on the other side also. Put as many in as you feel comfortable with. Um, and you might even need a support brace coming across here on the bottom. Something to stabilize it before you put the trusses in to um, pull everything together or to tighten everything up. The next step will be to install the center truss here and this will help straighten this truss up here and this truss here. So if it's bowed this way or this way it'll push it back or uh, it should straighten this up here and then plumb this truss up here or at least get the top where you want it. And just kind of whip through here, give you a view at the top. And remember, this is just an example of this truss system. This might not be what you're dealing with. And of course, the truss is, or the um, this truss here is two by four. Top cord is sitting on top of the girder and might actually sit on top of this here. But uh, most of the time, these aren't going to be spanned more than eight feet apart. I think a two by four is pushing it on uh, most roofs if it's uh, anything more than eight foot. Set the hips in here, and the hips are usually just going to be separate boards, except they are going to have a little um, wedge-shaped uh, thing on the bottom to flatten it out and so that you can nail it in to the plates. If this was just a regular 2x4, it might not be in the, in the right spot. You're going to need to also make sure that these boards are straight. And this is going to require you to sight down them every once in a while. So you can see here, if you were to nail this off, and I wouldn't suggest to do that, you know, maybe put one nail in here. Um, pull it together where you think it is, put a nail in here, and then go down and sight up it. And if it needs to move this way or this way, then um, then do so. And just to kind of give you an idea what I'm talking about here. Let's just say I looked up, I sighted up this, and this was bowed out to the right. Then if that's the case, I would need to force or move the truss here over a little bit. And of course, I might need to adjust it if it's not going to go. I might need to wait until I put the next truss in to, uh, to move it over. Then you can put these filler truss trusses in here. And remember, this one here is going to go all the way across. This one here will butt into this one here. But I would suggest putting these in something like this. And again, not nailing the heck out of them until you make sure that this is straight. And you can always use a string line. Put a, uh, put a nail or a screw at, at uh, one point in the center maybe and then go up to the top and then straighten everything out with a string also. But make sure that you, um, you know, just don't start putting all of these trusses in and then fill these trusses in and then you side up and you look and it's an inch off. That is not going to work too well with your um, truss or I should say it's not going to look good. Uh, if you want to keep it straight, you're going to have to make sure that these hips are straight and the only way you're going to do that is by um, siding up and down and double checking them every once in a while to make sure they are straight and again if you're not comfortable siding you know just uh, looking down this with your eye and and uh, um, then get a string get a string and put a screw in the point here and a screw in the middle of the width here two by four that's going to be three quarters of an inch in and then pull a string tight and then come up to here and if it's off um, a half inch then push it back um, the string will really be a good help for you 
And you could always block it as you go or install the filler trusses in and then block everything at the same time. And again, remember, most of the time, this truss right here is going to go all the way through. You're going to have a section like this to go all the way through, and then these will butt into it. And then these little, we used to call these flyers, um, not going to be uncommon. And sometimes you won't even get these. You'll have to cut your own if uh, you don't have them. And uh, again, you can always cut these if you don't know. Just put the same cut that you have here, um, copy it somehow, and put it down here. Again, sight up everything to make sure that you don't have to beat anything over. And then simply repeat the same process over here on the other side. Make sure you sight the hip again. Everything's nice and straight. A view from the bottom, nailing into the blocks. And the truss manufacturer might require you to solid block this, which would be a block in between each truss. A view down here, see how this one comes across. And then these two will butt into it. And here's the little wedge-shaped piece I was talking about on the, tr on the hip. And this is also something you would need if you were going to drywall. You could always screw uh, um, or nail into that sometimes. And then do the same thing to the other side. And of course, here is your brace. And uh, if you have everything ready, this can come off. Next step will be to install a board that will keep the trusses lined up. And I like to have, if you have a situation like this, Make sure that it connects to a truss on the other side, one of these. And this can be longer, but this would kind of create a nice solid tie across here. You're not really going to have that if you don't have uh, something to connect everything together. But again, that's optional. Just uh, extra insurance. But you can see here how this goes all the way across now to the other side. Another view of it there, and that is the end of the video. And I do not uh, do not think I'm going to split this one in half. It will be a, a, a 18 or 19 minute video, it looks like. So hope you liked it. If you do, you know what to do. Hit the old thumbs up button.